Right, welcome back folks. A little bit something different today. We've actually got ourselves here a brand new Honda Izzy and it's the GCV145X engine on it. This is actually um, about three weeks old, this lawnmower, and it's uh, one of my neighbor's ones and she's only actually ever used it twice. So this mower actually did set her back uh, £699. So it is a self-drive one. Uh, lovely machine since she's had it she's noticed the hunt there was a bit of a hunting noise coming from the engine so um i've had a quick little look around it so she did fire up and show me what it was doing after a minute or two it does start hunting surging so what we'll do now is i'll quickly fire it up and show you this is the automatic choke on this one uh easy start auto choke system on this so Hopefully it should just go, no, no priming involved or anything like that. It's just a matter of holding the handle in and uh, pulling the cable. So I'll start it up now. It may take a few seconds for it to uh, kick in and start the hunting, but let's have a little listen to it. So I'm just going to put a clip on there. So I'll say the fuel's already on, so let's go for a start. So I'm just going to check to make sure the automatic choke has come off now. And the butterfly flap is in the open position, so the choke's definitely come off. That's doing what it should be doing, because that is a common problem with these, uh, the chokes actually stick on. So yeah, that's uh, the issue we're getting there. It is hunting there. So I say once it takes about a minute to get going and then the hunting does start. You see, I just, just take the air filter off there. I just wanted to see if that made any sort of difference to the way the engine was run. And I did check the automatic choke. That seems to be all operated as it should because it is open now. So the choke has come off. So what we can do next is just check the, all the parts to make sure there's nothing uh, split on there because it could be an air leak. Or other than that, I'll check the plug as well. I did check the oil before I started it and the actual oil was uh, very low in it. So the way you do check these oils in these Honda mowers, not every mower is the same. Just check your uh, user manual to see how you do yours. But on the Honda ones, you actually just drop it in. You don't screw it in. You just literally pull it in, pull it out and then check your uh, level then. So on the old classic 35s, you wind them in on the Briggs and Stratton's. But I say on, on the Honda ones, most of the Hondas, you just drop that in and do your reading there so it will actually tell you that in your owner's manual and there is actually a little sticker on the side there as well just to show you that as well so i say it's a, a lovely machine this a lot of money though for 700 quid i reckon the issue is i think we just need to do a little basic carb service on it because i think when they do build these up from new these mowers they obviously put a bit of fuel in them just to run them up to make sure everything's fine before they leave the factory and then they get sold on so what i'm thinking is maybe What's happened is it's been test run in the factory. Uh, there's been a bit of fuel left in it and obviously not in the tank, just a little bit of fuel left in the carbs or the lines. And um, it's just been sitting there because I did actually look on the ticket. Uh, this mower is, was actually built in March 22. And we're actually in the time of filming this video is July 23. So it's been about 12 to 13 months sitting on a shelf. So if there was a little bit of fuel in it, that could have been the issue. So we're gonna take it inside now. We'll get the carb off. We'll have a look in there. We'll check the lines as well, make sure there's nothing, maybe even a line come off. So let's get inside and hopefully get this lawnmower sorted for the lady next door. All right, so we're bringing the lawnmower in. Not been working in the polytunnel for a long time because even today it's really too hot to be in here, but uh, the uh, log cabin, there's a bit of stuff on the workbench in there. so. 
I can't be asked to move everything off of there. So I'm going to attempt to work in here. It could work outside, but it's just easy because all the tools are in there, but I'm already getting a bit of sweat on and I ain't even done nothing yet. So some of you may realize, notice that the, I've had a bit of a tidy up in here. The Piaggio's off of the workbench and I've got the TZR outside just so I could give it a bit of a clean out because uh, we're getting a bit overrun with weeds coming through the side. So I've actually got them outside for a minute and uh, when I bring them in, I might stick the TZR on the ramp because it seems to be getting taken over by nature in this corner here. So enough of that waffle. I'm gonna get this table jacked up now. Right, so coming in here, I'm just gonna turn the fuel off first. We'll take the air filter out. As you can see, it's all brand new in here. So I've got a couple of 10 mils so I've just got myself my 10 mil socket. Just uh, nip them off. So it also could be just um, old fuel in here. I don't know how old the fuel is that the lady has next door because uh, I do all the servicing on her mowers. She's got another Honda Izzy. You would have seen it on the channel previously. She's got an old, um, the blue deck ones. I think that's a 16 inch self drive, the ones she's got she's keeping it as a backup but this one she just fancies something a little bit bigger than what she's got so just pulled that off there a little bit of fuel weeping off behind that not a biggie so on the back of your air box you've got a breather pipe there and that just sits in that little hole up there if you can just see that and here's the carburetor set up just for if anyone needs to have a look at one if you've got yours in bits at home so there you can see it's all lovely and fresh and brand new. So I'm just hoping a quick little uh, carb service on this and that should sort us out. So you can see where the linkages go. There's two holes on the top there. It goes on the one on the inside and we've got the operating system there for the automatic choke. So I'm just gonna pull this carb off and uh, we'll take a look inside. And also just to note, you've got a little spring on the outside hole there. So. Your main thick bar goes on the inside and your thin spring goes on the inside there so just uh, disconnect that spring and I'm just going to get some pliers to take that fuel line off. Right welcome back folks I've actually had to make a little bit of space in this uh, log cabin because uh, as I said it was really hot out there and the uh, camera did actually overheat so I don't know how far you see me stripping this carburetor off of the lawnmower so I've had to come in here give the camera 10 minutes to cool down so here we are again we're just going to take this uh, bowl off which is a 10 mil again so I've got a bit of petrol leaking out there not too much so just get that out and just give that a little knock break that seal and it looks very good in there even if there was a bit of crap in there it might be out on the tissue now so we won't know about that but I just want to check the emulsion tube and uh, just give this carb a nice bit of a quick little service I weren't really expecting to see much crap in here I say because it's only had one tank of petrol in it so everything else in here looks to be as it should be really nice and clean in here we'll just take that float pin off for now just put that out there the pins fell out so let's just put that there all looks lovely and clean as you would expect from a new mower and do make sure you do get yourself a good fitted screwdriver all right so i've managed to find a screwdriver that would do the job it was very tight in there that so just give that a little tap there it is so I'm just going to check that jet up at the light that's clear not a problem in that one so let's check this tube and that's just dropped straight out lovely so I'll just go have a look up at the light at this and I'll be back with you Right, so I don't know if you can actually see on this tube. You've got your two bigger holes there, 
and just there there's two smaller ones and uh, there's four of them going right round so there's two, four, six, eight going right round at the top and eight going round at the bottom and the actual two on the bottom are actually partially blocked up there so I'm just going to quickly get a bit of fine wire just poke them out and clean them and what I have here is just a multi set of uh, different size cables uh, they're actually little mini files so don't go too mad because you don't want to be opening the hole up too much so I want the smallest one there and I'm just going to go through all these little holes at the bottom just like that Look, just go through like that give them a quick in and out just like that just to clear any crap out of there that's lovely and I tend to go around all the way even though you're popping out the other side I just like to go the other way just to give them a push through both ways so that's all them had a quick clean out I've used a bit of carb spray I've just gone over the carb as well just to double check anything so what we can do now is we can start putting this back together now so we just drop our emulsion tube back in and we'll put our screw cap back in there our main jet just wind that in remember don't go too mad because you, you don't want to damage this, damage this brass little jet right guys so yet again the camera did overheat being in here as well i mean i did look at the temperature in here it's about 23 degrees in here so uh, what i've done now is i've left the door open hopefully just to get a bit of breeze coming through so that's actually twice this camera's overheated to be fair I did think it would probably overheat in the poly tunnel because that is just just too much in there but I thought it would be all right in there so I'm gonna have to try and keep an eye on the camera screen now because it does put up a little alert on the front screen saying that it's overheated so I just need to keep an eye on that because I'm losing a bit of footage now when I'm doing this so yeah I say the last thing you probably saw me was putting in the the main jet so I put the cut back on the bottom so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and um, put the card back on so I'm just going to get me two little bars I remember the solid bar went on the inside and the spring just went on the outside there just like that so then we can slide that back on there just making sure everything lines up properly that's all as it should be automatic choke is all doing as it should there as you can see so it starts from a cold then when it's warm that just flings back there and stays in the open position there so I'm going to put, get the air box back on now so remembering we have got our little gasket that goes on there as well so you just need to bear in mind you get this right way around there's a little hole up there that meets up with that just like that you see so that all meets up like that we need to make sure we get our breather pipe back in as well because that can cause you some uh, running issues so that's back in where it needs to be yep that's in in fact i haven't put the fuel hose back on so let's get that back on first because that'll be a bit of a nightmare to get on we'll just get that back on quickly so that's back on there so now we can go ahead and put that breather pipe back in there Give that a good push, make sure it's proper seated in there. And then we'll just go like that. We'll stick our 10 mil nuts back on. Just do them hand tight and then just give them a little pinch up with your ratchet a bit at a time each side don't go too mad there we go and that's spot on that so I have checked the plug on as well that's perfectly fine it's still like new again so we can go ahead and stick our new filter back in just like that hook that under there like that we can turn the fuel back on I'm just gonna wait a second just to make sure we've got no fuel leaks coming out from underneath just while that bowl fills up I 
all looks good under there as it should as being a brand new mower that's only been used twice i can't see any fuel coming out of there so i'm happy with that so what we'll do now is we'll head outside find a bit of shade hopefully and uh, we'll get this fired up and hopefully that is the running issue all sorted and it's good to go right guys so i'll go to be quick out here because i say the camera is overheating in this uh temperatures so i couldn't really start this in the log cabin and leave it running so let's give it a go and see how we get on Right, so that sounds fantastic. Not a problem there at all. Um, another thing I did do is I did actually drain the fuel out as well. And I've put some fresh uh, known good fuel in here as well. So, because you never know how old the fuel was that they've been putting in the mower as well. It didn't look too bad, the fuel. It was just slightly different color to uh, the fresh fuel we had. It was a little bit more yellowy, but who knows? But that could have been a contribute to it as well. Otherwise, this mower is a, uh, good to go now and as I say even brand new mowers you can get problems with so don't think if you go and buy one straight out of the shop that it's going to be uh, all hunky-dory as it should be if you're buying brand new at these prices as well but as I say a lady didn't want to go after the hassle of uh, going back and forwards with the company she just asked me because she knows I'll look after her on this one so uh, she comes to me every year so yeah the Honda GCVX 145 easy start auto choke system um, it's all running as it should be now so I'm gonna go take it back to the lady uh, and also as I say a common problem with these is uh, the automatic choke does stick on with these as well so just bear that in mind I'm gonna leave it here for this little video and uh, hopefully we can get back on the bikes and that soon I do want to get on them but as I say it's just too hot uh, working in that poly tunnel so I'm gonna take this back now and until next time we'll see you about